If or when the first regular Evertol air taxi services start in 2025, they will all have one thing in common, a pilot on board the aircraft. But Whisk Aero will not be in that group of front runners because, like Ehang in China, it sees autonomous operations as the only way to go. Not only does the Boeing subsidiary believe that autonomous flight is the foundation for the commercial viability of this new sector through savings in pilot salaries, it also insists that its approach will make the services fundamentally safer as the volume of aircraft increases in and around cities. So we think autonomy is the key to safe scalability. And because we believe that that's the end state for aircraft like this, for the safe scaling of aircraft in a transportation network, we're going directly to that solution. So we're really proud to be going, you know, paving the path to a direct to autonomous aircraft. And right now, the aircraft that you see behind me, this is our Gen 6 airplane, and we're in the middle of building and producing this airplane right now with an expected first flight somewhere around the latter half of this year. And we're working with the FAA right now on paving the certification path for autonomous aircraft of this type. We do think that there will be many of these aircraft that fly in networks in and around cities, but ultimately the benefits of autonomy in this class of airplanes is that we can solve many of the issues that cause incidents in the small aircraft space right now. So things like controlled flight into terrain, which are the number one cause of accidents for aircraft in this class of flight, we could solve those kinds of issues through automation. And the scalability of these networks will really be advantaged by having autonomous flight. One of the things that we know from doing our network planning is that the ability to decouple where an airplane needs to be from where the flight crew is, is one of those benefits that will allow us to have a very flexible transportation network and to better serve customers from where they are to where they need to be. Later this year, the Californian company aims to roll out and start flying its first full-scale prototype of what it calls its Gen 6 design. This is the configuration, so it's a four-seat airplane. Um, the Gen 6 that we're building right now is the same four-seat configuration. It has the same six tilting motors in the front and six fixed motors in the back with a high wing. That's exactly the same. Uh, what you'll see when we roll out the flight airplane later this year are some minor changes to the outer mold line of the airplane. It's a little bit sleeker. You'll see our new livery on the airplane later this year, and we're excited to, to, uh, to get it up in the air. Whisk has done plenty of flight testing with earlier versions of its Evertol, as it's laid the foundations for proving to regulators that not only is its aircraft safe, but that the plan to fly it with no pilot on board is safe too. It is a painstaking and gradual approach. Many of our prior flights have really proved to us that the what you might consider the lower level automation functions, so think about things like the flight controls of how to control the control surfaces on this airplane or the powertrain on this airplane, we've really made those robust through the prior generations of the airplane and through the work that we're doing right now. And what we're also doing is using helicopters, so surrogates, that we actually also fly along with our electric airplanes. And those surrogates, we put on board sensors and other systems to show that the higher level automation, the mission automation, so think things like seeing and avoiding other airplanes and being able to do automated landings at our vertiport locations, we're proving those out in our surrogates as well. So the approach for us has been to develop the prior generation autonomous electric airplanes and make those systems robust, and in parallel also work with surrogates, so helicopters, and make those higher level automation systems robust. Both of those pathways intersect at Gen 6, and that's what we're certifying right now. And now with the sixth generation aircraft, it will raise the bar higher when flight testing gets underway. So the first flights will be relatively simple. They'll be hover type flights and then translating flights. And over time, what we'll do is we'll transition the airplane from hovering like a helicopter to uh, flying on the wing like an airplane. And, uh, and we'll proceed to expand the entire flight envelope of the airplane. So how will it be for you as a passenger when you book your flight on Whisk's app? You'll approach one of the new vertiports and see an aircraft with no pilot and what? 
Just figure out that this is the one you're supposed to get on board for your trip. In autonomous systems, uh, people don't go away, they change what they're doing. And so part of what we have to do is, is to piece together that entire system, which will involve people on the ground to be part of the Vertiport network system, to bring people into the aircraft, to do maintenance on the aircraft, um, obviously to supervise the airplane when it's flying as part of our supervisor stations for the airplane. Um, so people are involved, those roles are different. And part of what we're doing right now uh, with certification authorities and with some of the operational partners that we have is designing what those roles will be, the roles and responsibilities, proving those out in relevant tests and uh, ultimately parting, uh, you know, making that part of how we will go to market. So plenty more work still needs to be done and in some respects flying the aircraft is just the tip of the iceberg. To ensure that the foundation for its EVATOL business case is sound, WISC will operate the early use cases itself. But that approach leaves the door open to partnerships with other aircraft operators and travel service providers as this nascent industry gathers momentum for what will be a much longer time span than whatever may happen in 2025. One of the things that's important to understand in this space is that we have to pioneer what it's like to get approvals to operate an autonomous airplane and then to understand really how to do that from an operator standpoint. So one of our plans is to actually be the initial operator of this airplane, though we are interested in speaking with potential operational partners as well once we pave that ground and understand what it takes to do that. So uh, we'll have multiple operational models as we get closer to going to market. The way I like to think about this is we're at the very beginning of this industry really taking off. And uh, some of it we can predict, some of it we can't predict, you know, but there will be a way that this market scales that won't be you know, a big bang moment all of a sudden once the airplanes are certified. And so just sort of responsibly building our way through that market and doing it in a way that's sustainable and that, and that brings real customer value in a safe way, that's, that's what we're focused on. Well, if you want to stay on top of how WISC and other companies are transforming aviation, Please stick with us at AIN. Our Future Flight News team has constant updates like this, and you'll find all of those at AINonline.com slash futureflight. Thank you for watching.